What's up everybody, it's your girl Nia the Video Gamer and I wanted to come on really quickly and talk about some Splatoon news. So, uh, the guys over at Game Explain, and to those of you guys who aren't familiar with Game Explain, there are a couple of people on YouTube, they also have a website, and they go really in-depth with games. They mostly do Nintendo games and they kind of pretty much talk about the ins and outs of the game, um, and what's special about them, the features of the game, pretty much stuff that we normally wouldn't see or we would overlook they go deep into you know what's going on and probably you know what this game is trying to convey like they just get real deep on the games basically so they recently went to nintendo of america headquarters in washington to try out splatoon and so when they were trying out splatoon they tried out um some different stages so the stages that we the stage that we saw at e3 was like at a skate park or something like that they showed, um, I think they showed like a warehouse, they showed um, like an oil rig or something like that, and they showed another stage, but I can't really think of them at the moment, but they are really nice looking stages. Um, in the background of the video, we kind of got to hear some of the music in Splatoon, which is really dope, by the way. I'm really digging the whole like hard rock, like grunge, you know, type of setting, like I think, that's hot like that's hot to me um and they also showed there's gonna be more than one mode oh, this was something that i was really worried about because it's a new ip and it seemed to be really ambitious um for these young guys even though i know these young guys they not new you know but just for it to be like their first game they're making i was kind of hoping that the game wouldn't be lacking it wouldn't be limited so on top of turf war which is what we've already seen there's gonna be like a king of the hill mode now the only thing that sucks about the king of the hill mode is that it's not gonna be unlockable until most people that have the game have reached rank 10 because they don't want it to be a situation where like there's i guess there's noobs in there whatever and they getting wrecked by all these high level people i think that's lame as hell you shouldn't coddle people, especially in Nintendo of all people, the kings of gameplay are coddling people. Let us jump in regardless of what level we are and, and play this rank mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be wanting to play King of the Hill. And if it's like taking too long for them to finally unlock the mode, that's going to suck for me. Not saying I'm just going to be like boss hog in the game and stuff like that, but it's another option. I mean, Turf War is cool. But King of the Hill is for a, a, a little bit more um, strategic play um, than Turf for. So, I hope they fix that. But, supposedly there's a rumor that Splatoon is coming on May 29th. Apparently, it's from Nintendo's official press site. And that was like a European date or a Japanese date or something like that. It might be different for... It might be different than that. It could be different for us over here in North America. I personally was hoping that Splatoon would come out in early May because that's around the time of my birthday, you know what I'm saying? But whatever is cool, I'm okay with whatever. So I just can't wait to get my hands on the game. So, big elephant in the room is, according to Game Explain, Nintendo of America have given 100% confirmation there will be no voice chat with either private matches with friends or public matches with randoms. There will be no voice communication whatsoever. So, obviously that made me very upset. I think it's dumb for a game of that genre, especially that genre in particular. I mean, I think Smash Brothers and Mario Kart could pretty much get away with it or just get away with lobby chat. But with a game like Splatoon, where you're trying to strategize with individuals to reach the end goal, there's there's so much wrong with not being able to communicate with your team. There's a lot of people that disagree with me. I don't care what you think. I think it's a missed opportunity. And that's going to be a really big drawback for a lot of people. And you know what? I can't even blame them. You know, I made the video before about how I think that Boycott and Splatoon doesn't properly communicate the message. But at the same time, it's your money. If you feel like you you boycotting this game for a reason that you believe in, I can't hate on you for that. That's your choice. 
I'm still getting it. I can understand why that's a big no for a lot of people. I can't even be mad at that. So me, being the person that I am, well, I already had this program anyway. I took it upon myself to make um, a raid call. And to those of you guys who aren't familiar with um, PC games, like a lot of PC gamers use things like TeamSpeak, Raid Call, and the like. Uh, what's the other one? Mumble. Um, because a lot of PC games, especially like those big multiplayer uh, mass levy MMOs, whatever, like those games usually tend not to have voice chat. Or, you know, maybe they do, but people just want a different alternative. They'll usually go to something like Raid Call. Um, and it's a little bit more acceptable for PC games because everything is so accessible. Like, there's so many options for voice chat. But in my opinion, since Splatoon is a console game, I'm going by console game standards. And for a console game, it's, to me, it's unacceptable for Splatoon not to have voice chat. But it doesn't, at this point, it's spilled milk. It is what it is. But I'm going to show you guys what I've made. Um, so basically what I did was made a thing called Raid Call. And to those of you guys who are um, unfamiliar with Raid Call, I'm going to go ahead and walk you guys through it really quickly. So I don't even want to compare it to Skype. It is completely different from Skype. And... Uh, Basically, what makes it severely different from Skype is that the developers of, of Raid Call have created servers so that people like me could go in and make groups for free and have people come into my room to chat and play games and things of that nature. So basically, you come in here, you sign on, you come in here, you press F2 to talk. Or you can put it on free talk mode. You don't have to press F2 to talk all the time. Um, and you just communicate. You communicate with whoever is in whatever channel you're using at the time. So I'll give you guys all of the information to my raid call in the description. But when you first come into my raid call, you're going to come into this lounge. And so this lounge is a main reception area. So guests and members this will be the first place that you see it is pretty much just a general place where everybody goes but say if you want to come in here and you want to play i don't know you want to play mario kart 8 with some people you'll drag your name to the mario kart 8 group if i can show it on screen where is it there we go so i would drag my name to the mario kart 8 group and then anybody who wants to play Mario Kart 8 with me can come in here and play. And say if this group gets bigger, because I think these raid calls can hold up to a thousand people or something like that. Say there's 24 people that decides to come in here and they want to play Mario Kart. 12 people can come over here in this chat channel number one. And then 12 more people can come into chat channel number two. So we're all still in the same Mario Kart group, but we're all in our different subgroups. So say if some, if there are 12 people in chat number one, they can only hear themselves. So you're not gonna be able to hear people who are in chat number two or in the main Mario Kart group or even people who are in the main reception lounge. It's literally like you're physically moving yourself from one room to the other room and you're only communicating with the people who are also in the same room with you so it could be like people in here playing mario kart people in here playing mass effect people in here playing super smash brothers um and they're all in their own little separate subgroups so that's pretty much how it works um and the thing that i really like the most about raid call is because it takes up so little resources it doesn't really take up that much internet bandwidth it doesn't really take up that much memory on your CPU. So when you're in this thing, you're not putting a whole lot of stress on your computer. Because I know a lot of people, they feel that, you know, if they were to use Skype and play games at the same time, it would eat up a lot of the, the internet memory, the internet bandwidth. But with Raid Call, it uses very little and you don't have to worry about that. And because Raid Call is server-based, because there's no host, if there's an issue with the raid call, that's on you. It's not gonna, and it's not gonna interfere with people you're talking to. So say if you're in a group and you're in here playing Monster Hunter, 
if something's going on with the raid call, it's not going to affect the rest of your group. So it'll just be you. You would have to either reset your computer or reset your router or whatever. And everybody else would be able to play comfortably. Also, the awesome thing about raid call is that it has automatic noise cancellation. Because it automatically detects the sensitivity in your mic. So say you got a whole bunch of roommates or you got a whole lot of people at your house and you're in raid call. You're playing Splatoon. The only thing that the people in your group can hear is your voice. Not really so much your background noise. I mean, there are situations where if you have a whole lot of background noise, the players that you're playing with will be able to hear you. But then that's when you go down here to the talk option where it says push your talk, free talk mode, and you come in here and you adjust your mic sensitivity. So that's pretty much how that works. So it's real, it's real nifty. So, um... That's pretty much how Raid Call works. You guys are more than welcome to come and join my Raid Call. Um, just come in, apply for membership, and I will put all the information and stuff in the description. And if there's anything else that I missed about Raid Call, I will also put that in the description. So, um, by no means is it acceptable for Nintendo to not implement voice chat as Splatoon. But until we rally and we scream hoop, and holler or if they decide to wake up and make sure that the Nintendo NX assuming it's a console has proper online features this is a good little um, mid place where it's pretty much convenient for many people because of the the resources it uses aren't very much multiple people can use this multiple people can be in multiple rooms and it's just one big hub for everybody to stay in touch and communicate and just pretty much build a community, you know. And shout out to my homie, uh, Active Gamer Life, for hashtag we have a voice. Until hashtag we have a voice gets big and our voice is loud and Nintendo understands what we're saying and that they get what we want, we have to make unnecessary sacrifices and raid call I feel like is one of them obviously it's not that serious you don't have to buy Splatoon but if you are interested in Splatoon you still want to buy it even if you decide to buy it used but you still want to talk to people this is a really nice stopgap so that being said it's your girl Nia I'm out I'll talk to you guys at a later date peace